YouTube Oz it going. The Goat House is back today. I'm ranking the top 10 passing games for the 2021 NFL season. So we're going to go 10 to 1, top 10 teams, essentially predictions for this upcoming season. The same thing for run games. In that one, I had more than 10. I had some honorable mentions. They felt like top 10 running games. For this one, I just think it's pretty straightforward what 10 teams were all expecting to be uh, you know, at the top here. Of course, there'll be some surprise teams. Uh, you guys are debating, talking about this on Twitter already. Make sure you follow our Twitter. Uh, talking during live games. Got some big preseason games coming up this week. I'll actually predict some preseason games, too, uh, on our Twitter. That'll be fun. Um, but you guys will have a say in weekly pick on there as well. It's a bunch of good reasons to follow that Twitter. Like, subscribe. we got full NFL coverage. Cannot wait for the season to start. Uh, yeah, here's our Twitter. And I, I post this. We have the best passing offense this year. Uh, comment with every team that you would like uh, it, that will be the best in your opinion as well. Uh, but just constantly giving you guys updates, as you can see on the NFL. So it's a good reason to follow this at Godos NFL. There's a link down below. Number 10 passing offense for this upcoming season, in my opinion. I went with the Falcons. Um, they're going to try to run the ball a little more, we think. You know, bringing in Arthur Smith, they're going to try to run the ball a little more. So maybe a little less passing production, maybe just a little bit. You can kind of debate that because maybe they could – um, open up the running game, which they have not been able to really open up in the past, recently I should say, which could result in um, you know teams game planning for both the run and the pass, you know rather than compared to just the passing game. So that could actually make things easier for Matt Ryan, resulting in the team being more effective in the passing game. So it's definitely possible, but I, I still think you know how they're built. You know Matt Ryan, Calvin Ridley, Kyle Pitts now. Um, it's, it's a, it's, it's still a, that's where their strength is the passing game here. So, um, I think they make the cut here. They're in the top 10, uh, but can't wait to see what they got. You know, see if Arthur Smith's got, you know, maybe, maybe it's unexpected. Maybe it's a pass first offense. Cause I think a lot of people based on where he's coming from, they expect him to be a run first offense. I'd say not so fast. So, um, we'll see what he's got planned. Number nine is gonna be the Cardinals. I think a pretty balanced team. Um, you know, but it's a pass-first team. You're going to see a lot of spread looks. they got a load of receivers. Uh, you know, they, I like adding Rondale Moore. Uh, they definitely need to get things going over the middle of the field from, from the receivers specifically, uh, underneath middle of the field, and that's exactly where Rondale Moore comes into play. So I love that. They had A.J. Green. So they're really, you know, we knew they stretched the field, you know, I guess north and south, you know, um, vertically. You know, with Kyler Murray's arm and having Hopkins, having uh, Christian Kirk's a kind of a deep ball guy, you know, so we knew they stretched the field that way. They stretched the defense out. Uh, now I like that they're kind of stretching it, um, you know, horizontally here. That's good because we already know Hopkins can, I mean, he's a do it all guy. He can control, you know, a side. I mean, he was dominant across the sideline. Felt like the left side. Uh, so many comebacks or back shoulders that they were just dominant on. Now you got A.J. Green for the opposite side. So you're really stretching the field out. You have Rondale Moore in the middle. Kirk can go deep. You're pretty much anywhere on the field. So I do like that. Kyler Murray has the arm. Um, you know, struggled a little bit later last year. I think he had to do with his shoulder. So hopefully he's good to go there. Um, but yeah, I expect this team to be a top 10 passing offense. There's some really good ones here too. Eight, I'm going to go with Seattle. I want to put the Seahawks higher. They're very close. It shows how close one through eight is because they're very close to being yeah, number one, really. I want to put them higher. Why I say that is because I think, you know, I th we're going to see. I think, I think all of us th are predicting, we think that they're going to gear more towards being a pass first team, kind of like we saw early last year when they were just lights out. They were number one scoring offense, number one passing offense. It was very early portion last year. And they kind of went back to their old game, which was pound the rock early, um, be very conservative, kind of wear the defense out, and then kind of unleash Russell Wilson in the second half, the passing game in the second half, which I wasn't really against that, but a little too conservative. It got too predictable. So I like they changed things up early last year. And they kind of went back. They kind of made a comment. You know, somebody within the staff, Pete Carroll, the front office, made a comment that they kind of wanted to go back to running the ball. You know, they felt like that was kind of their home, not exact words. Uh, but now it seems like they're gearing towards, you know, that pass first team here uh, once again uh, compared to early last year. 
But and that's why I want to put them higher. And again, this is a good rank. You know, I think they're very close. Even though they're eight, they're very close to being one. I'm just a little hesitant because do they kind of go back to kind of where they start? You know, their roots. You know, their their run first mentality. You know, I think we will see that some weeks. Could that and that could be the slight difference in splitting up some of these high powered elite passing attacks like the Seahawks and the other teams we're about to talk about. So, I'm excited though. They definitely have the receiver group. They have Russell Wilson. The offensive line we hope is better. Um, it should be, but how much? You know, uh, seven. I'm going to go with the Rams. Uh, adding Matthew Stafford, already a pretty effective passing game before, and now you're going from Goff to Stafford. I do worry about Stafford staying healthy long term. I've been saying that since the the second they got him. He always has some injuries. He's usually playing injured, you know. He's got his thumb situation now, um, you know. So if he whether he's in or out, of course that affects the passing game. But they they loaded up on even more receivers, adding Deshaun Jackson, Tutu Atwell, etc. Uh, and they already have a pretty good group. Could have got like Van Jefferson st- uh, step up. They like Daryl Henderson in terms of uh, p- pass catching back. Um, so it's going to be a pretty good passing attack. I do think there'll be some weeks um, that they'll look like more like a running team because the- their offensive line is built more towards run blocking, in, in my opinion. Um, you know, so I think Henderson could have some good weeks there. Um, you know, so it's not going to be – it's going to be that team, too. If they get a lead, they're going to start running the ball. They're not going to go all out, pat, airing the ball downfield an entire game. So, yeah, start splitting hairs with some of these teams and why maybe they're not number one, even though they could be number one when it's all said and done. They're actually that close. A lot of these teams, like I said, even with the Seahawks, that close. Six, I'm going to go with the Chargers. Um, you know, as soon as Herbert came in and for the rest of the year, they were towards the top here in terms of passing production – uh, even though I'm not really looking, production's key, but I'm looking for how effective they are in the passing game when it comes to these rankings. But I expect that to continue. You know, Justin Herbert Ball is a pass-first team. Um, they have the receivers, of course. Um, you know, I, I like that they, they're a team that's really focusing on stretching the field out as well. You know, you have all these deep ball receivers that can kind of fit Herbert Ball, get you going downfield, but you have Keenan Allen, who's kind of a do-it-all guy. I think he really dominates – you know, intermediate routes, um, really anywhere. But I think that's good. You kind of you go go from deep to kind of the middle of the field, and then you have Eckler, who's one of the better uh, receiving backs in football, who gets you going underneath. So you're really stretching the defense out. Um, and then Herbert does that, of course, w- with his arm talent. So I love that, and that's a big reason why they're a top six, in my opinion. And again, they could be fighting for that one spot. I, like I said, I think all these teams are that close. Um, so I'm really excited to see where the Chargers are at. Kind of the big question we have, you know, it's good to move on to that last coaching staff because they had some bad decision making, you know, decision making, some bad decisions within the game, bad game management skills uh, that cost them some games. Um, but they had the right system and they had the right, yeah, they had the right playbook. I think early in games when they kind of have that script, it looked really good to fit Herbert Ball. Those things looked gr- actually look great. You know, so going to a new – is it a new system? Is it a, How different is the playbook? That's what I'm looking forward to see. Um, will, will they continue on what was working with Justin Herbert? You would expect them to, yes, but that's something that we're all questioning here, uh, how will it will look. Uh, five, I'm going to go with the Cowboys. This is kind of riding on Dak staying healthy and – and the offensive line, you know, Dak got hurt. What did he play, four weeks? Not even. Um, Leo Collins didn't play it down. Tyron Smith missed a bunch of time. So that affected them big time. Um, but it's it's turned into a pass-first first, uh, team. You know, they even want to get Zeke going more in the passing game, catch the ball in the backfield, downfield. They have the that receiver trio and more if you factor in their depth, but their tight ends as well. Tony Pollard, you know, when you factor him in, he used to be a receiver, so he can play a part in that. Um, you know, and Dak can throw. He can throw as long as his, sh- his shoulders are right. So, you know, that's kind of the new injury. I'm not really worried about his ankle too much. It's more of his shoulder. So that's kind of what we're questioning here. But this could be a high-powered, if healthy, could be a high-powered elite passing attack. So we'll see if it stays healthy. Um, you know, Hard Knocks first episode aired last night, so I'm, you know, enjoying watching that uh, the rest of the way here to see What's going on with the Cowboys, and we'll see if Dak kind of gets back going because that shoulder injury is definitely interesting. You know, they're saying it's more like a baseball injury, so interesting. Uh, top four, I'm going to go Packers four. Again, so close to being one. Uh, it's kind of a good thing here because, you know, the difference between the top three and the Packers, the top three are just, I don't want to say pure. They're pretty close to pure just, just passing teams. You know, they can run the ball. I think there is, you know, they can run the ball. Don't get me wrong. 
But the Packer, Packers are the top four that are so close. They're the most balanced because they're a top 10 rushing attack, in my opinion, too. Kind of borderline, maybe. Um, debatable. But, uh, you know, and they have that high power passing attack as well with Aaron Rodgers. Um, you know, but there's those weeks where they'll just pound the football and they'll have the lead early and they'll keep pounding the football, which is great at the balance they have. But, you know, they add Randall Cobb. They add a guy like Mari Rodgers. They have Devin Funches. I don't know. Somebody's not going to make the team. I don't know who it is. But, um, you know, they got a pretty good group out there compared to the past. You know, I mean, they're probably still looking for another true number one to pair with Devontae Adams. But that'll be ideal. But uh, they, they got a pretty deep group now. And we'll see if that works out and helps the passing game. Um, I do think early in the season we'll see them kind of go toward. It could be wrong, but they they'll, they'll start. They'll try to go towards the running game a little bit uh, to open things up and make things easier, not to show all their cards right away. Uh, but I got them at four, three. I'm going to go with the Bucks. I'm a top tier passing attack from last year. Uh, I think that'll continue. They have the load the load of weapons there. Running game got going as season went on though. Ronald Jones regular season really got going. Uh, and then Leonard Fournette really got going in the playoffs. Now they have Gio Bernard, who can be involved in the passing game as well. Um, so they could use these running backs, uh, you know, maybe a little more, focus on the run game a little more to take things off Tom Brady. Definitely possible. Um, it's totally run by Tom Brady, though. So I think what he says kind of goes at the line of scrimmage. Um, you know, we even th- we think that for some other quarterbacks, you know, Rodgers. Rodgers definitely has a lot of control, but we see LaFleur kind of controlling a lot there. Um, you know, you know, we've kind of learned, you know, the, in the playoff game against the Bucks specifically, we kind of learned that even more. Um, but yeah, you know, what I'm looking forward to, you know, Brady still have the arm strength. Um, you know, he still he still has the touch on the ball. You know, at his age, his decision making declined. It felt like last year they still won a Super Bowl, but his this, this decision making declined a little bit. He kind of just threw some. Let's say 50-50 balls, but not even 50-50, just kind of up for grabs, just kind of like a punt return for defenders and almost felt like those types of balls, which was surprising to see. So where where will he fall on the side of things this year, you know, after that? If he can clean that up, man, we're talking about MVP uh, season, you know, obviously. And he was pretty much there even with those mistakes. So that's pretty ridiculous. Um, but I got them at three. But I do think some weeks they actually could look like a running team. They, they could. You know, 90% more maybe as a passing team first. Um, number two, I'm going to go with the Bills. It's you know, kind of a pure passing team. If they can get the run game going, that would be great. They do have a, you know, a, kind of a three-headed monster in there. You know, I don't want to say monster, but it, competing for that running back spot, starting running back spot, they have the rotation, so they can get things going there. But Josh Allen's just getting going. He's just getting started. He's still got a lot of upside. They're going to continue to air this ball out. Second year with Stephon Diggs. Um, you know, they're getting they're getting Gabriel Davis going. They got Cole Beasley, Emmanuel Sanders now added to that group. Dawson Knox, they want to get him going a little more. Um, you know, I, I think the running backs can be involved in the passing game a bit more than we're used to. So um, it, it's just a high-powered passing team. It's a team that's not going to get conservative on you either. Um, you know, they're going to keep airing it out throughout the game. Uh, I like that. I like that. You know, there's, I, I hate when teams get conservative and kind of just try to put the game away too early, run the clock a little too early. So the Bills are not that, and I, lo- I love that about them. So they're number two. Uh, number one, I got to go with the Chiefs. I do think the Chiefs want to get the run game going more, though. I do think that they built that offensive line for kind of running the ball. You know, Clyde edwards lair. But I do think Clyde edwards lair really gets going and helping in the passing game as, as well. Uh, and, you know, you do have the best player of football, the best passer of football on Patrick Mahomes. I think, you know, I mean, Tyreek Hill and, and Travis Kelsey, a sure thing to get going, obviously. Uh, and, and you know, I think they get guys like McCole Hardman going a little more. You know, maybe a rookie like Cornell Powell gets going. But, yeah, I think most people agree with this could be the number one passing offense. I really am looking forward to Clyde Edwards-Hilaire in, in terms of a pass-catching option. He was so, so damn good at LSU not just in the backfield catching the ball, but actually lining up as a receiver. I think the Chiefs kind of hid that a little bit last year. Uh, they definitely want to get the run game going. They want to get him going in the running game. But um, And they brought in McKinnon, who's a fantastic pass catching back too of healthy. So I think they want to get that going a bit. So adding another element uh, to their passing game, which they kind of had with Damian Williams when they won the Super Bowl. So they're, I think they're gearing mainly towards that, which is fantastic for the passing offense's sake here. Uh, so that's my top ten. Uh, again, there could be some sneaky teams. Let me know in the comments on Twitter. We're always talking who those teams could be or your 
you know, your rankings, like I said, one through eight, that range, they're, they're pretty much up for – number one's up for grabs for those teams, I think, for the most part. Uh, we'll rank every offense for this upcoming season, in my opinion, from 32 to one, and we're going to do the same thing for defense. Preseason uh, starts tomorrow, actually. That's Thursday, so I'm really excited about that. We'll pick some games. I never actually picked preseason games in the past. We do weekly picks for regular season, but I'll pick some games uh, on our Twitter for the preseason, so make sure you follow us there. Uh, really excited football starting back up. Hopefully you join us for all of our content. Like, subscribe. Be much appreciated. That's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.